Hello everyone, this is JBJ here bringing you yet another tutorial and this time we're going to be talking about singleton classes. Now what is a singleton class? Well it's something that restricts the initialization of a class to one object. Now before we get started I'm gonna assume that you know Objective-C, you know object-oriented programming um, which means you have object knowledge, you know how they work, you've, you know what they are and you've preferably worked with them before and you know Xcode, you've been using Xcode, maybe making a few apps or tests, whatever. You know the waters we're about to swim in. And it's a plus if you like, know or can relate to games because the example I'm, I'm making here is um, related to games, but that doesn't mean it's strictly for games. Um, it's, it's just um, an easy way to explain it, at least it is for me. Now, why should you bother to learn about a singleton class? Well, for me, it actually saved memory because I was trying to achieve the same effect by doing all sorts of different things. Um, and when I learned about the singleton class, it actually made things so much easier. And also, it's easy access. You can access your singleton object from anywhere in the world or anywhere in your application um, without any trouble at all. And you also know that it's the same data across every single view controller or object or whatever in your application you know it's there and you know it's the right one. Now I just quickly made this diagram here and what we have here in, in the top two blue boxes that is the player. Now this is the singleton class and the very top one, the biggest blue box is the, the player um, header file. We're gonna call the class player and in this case it has three instance um, variables. It has an inventory, money and progress. And below we see that we have a player object and that is the singleton object created from the class where we've set the instance variables to boots and 160 and misty mountains. Now at the bottom we have the view controllers. This can represent three different uh, view controller in your game, for instance, you could have a high score view controller and a game, which is um, the level the, the, the player is playing in, and then an options section. Now, each of these view controller could potentially need one or more of the data that the player object is holding. And by asking the player class, they will all be redirected to that single player object. So you won't have to pass data between. Uh, the game and the high score and the high score to the options um, and, and throw around with all the data. You don't have to do that. You just ask the player that, well, I'm the high score. I need to know how much gold did, did the player um, earn in the last game. And he'll say, well, you already made a player object, so here you go. You can ask this object anything you want because it's the same object that was just used by the game view controller. So enough with the theory and let's get on with it. What I have here is just a basic class. Um, it's a single view application. Sorry, not class, application. Single view application. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to create two view controllers. And I'll be giving each of them a label so we can verify that what we are doing is actually working and they both need a button and then a segue to change um, between the view controllers so we can navigate and this one is of the JPJ view controller so we just need a class for the other one and we're gonna call it to view controller and it's going to be a subclass of UI view controller. 
and we are going to set the other view controller to that one, like this. Now you should be familiar with all of this, so I'm just quickly setting it all up. I'm going to have this label, have an outlet to it, so we can set the text property. I'm going to call it the name label. I'm going to do the exact, exact same thing in the other one, name label again. And now we are actually good to go and we will be creating our singleton class. Now, what you want to do is create an, a normal Objective-C class. We're going to call it the player class and make it a subclass of NS objects. So now we have the most basic starting points. Now, what we're going to do is create um, the method that we'll be calling asking for um, our singleton object and it's going to return a player object and we will call it the player. Now let's see how we are going to implement this. Like this, call it the player. Now we are going to be creating a static player variable, set it to nil. Now static is actually the key word here because static variables will only be created one time during program execution and I'll demonstrate um, exactly how this works um, in a bit <coughs> excuse me so we're gonna test to see if this player object um, is nil and if it is that means it's the first time it's um, this method is being called so we need to create a new player object we're going to set this static variable to be super along with zone nil and init and then we're going to go ahead and return self whoops return the player and that's basically it but we're not quite done yet because first we need to override the alloc with uh, Zone. And this is a failsafe to um, make sure that the player um, method we just created is being used and can't be bypassed. So all it's going to do is actually um, return self the player. So it's actually going to run this method and return that object. And we just need to override one more method and that's the init method which you do every single time you're making a new object because you need an initialization method so this is pretty basic we're gonna set self to super init we're gonna test to see if it works and no problems occurred and then we are gonna set um, our instance variables here and return self. This is actually the basic template and I actually keep this um, in, a, in a file, um, these two classes, so whenever I'm making a new project I'm actually just importing these in and then um, setting some instance variables and setting them down here which we are gonna do right now because we need this class um, to have a property in monatomic and have a strong reference to it and it's gonna be an NS string and we're gonna call it name so our player has a name um, and normally you might want the player to be able to choose his own name but not this time this player is always um, to be called Jacob and that's basically it now we have the player class set up, we made sure it's a singleton class and we can use it and to demonstrate this I'll try and access the init method or, or sorry the, uh, the, name, the name instance variable in each of our two view controllers and then set the label to correspond to the name and we want to do that in the view to load method because we want to do it every time and the user is presented with the view. So what we do 
this set the text property of the name label to well, we need to import the player class first obviously because if we don't we can't really use it can we um, and back to it we are gonna call the player class um, sorry the player method on the player class and um, and that's the method we just created and we want to get the name property it's in the string it all looks fine and we want to assign that to our name label and it's the exact same thing in the other view controller so we're just gonna go ahead and copy this and import the player class like this and this should do it so let's just take it for a spin and see if it works Nothing like a good cup of coffee and some programming, eh? Let's see. There we go. Something's happening. Yeah, and there we go. And we see that it's set the label to Jacob. And if we change view control, the label is also set to Jacob. So what a wonder. But now, does this really mean that we only have one object? Well, this. Well, I just closed the simulator. Um, yeah. Let's just go ahead and verify that we only have one object. And we're going to do this by setting a nslog method in our init. And we're just going to go ahead and call it init because now we will be told every time a player object is created and we can see that we only get one um, lock message even though we keep asking the player class um, of a new um, player and the key to all this is this static variable because the first time we call the player class and it sees this static player the player it will create the object it will set it to nil and then it will initialize itself down here. Now the next time we call this player class and we ask it for the player, it looks at the static keyword and say, well, I've already created this line of code, so I won't be creating it again because it's the same one I'm gonna use. And then it tests to see if it's nil, and obviously it isn't nil because it was created at the previous run. So it doesn't um, initialize a new one, it simply just returns the old one. And that right there is the core concept and how it works. And we can demonstrate it by removing the static keyword here. Because if we do that, we will see down there that it's throwing out in an init message it's messages to us because we are creating a new player object every single time that we are asking for the player object. So that's basically it guys, I think we covered most of it and I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, I'm trying to make my tutorials as um, constructive um, as possible and not just a uh, quick cheat sheet or something. So um, I'm hoping you learned something, I'm hoping you enjoyed it, please if you have any advices um, or would like um, to change something, to ask me to do things in a different way or anything. Anything, just let me know. And please subscribe if you liked it. And that's it. So I'm hoping to see you guys next time.